so now we come to the development of the megaspore okay or uh, megasporogenesis it is uh, this megasporogenesis it used to come okay from this uh, chapter of netum so it's very important now the development of megaspore we will see here in the young ovule in figure a okay two of the four hypodermal cells uh, they will fuse together okay these hypodermal cells as you can see in this figure that uh they these hypodermal cells they will form the archaeosporial cells okay so the hypodermal cells of the new cellars i think you remember just now i had shown to you you can see here this is the new cellars so the hypodermal cells of the new cellars will differentiate to form archaeosporial cells then in figure b you can see that these cells they divide by periclinal division to form uh, outer primary parietal cells and inner primary sporogenous cells and the epidermis as well as the primary parietal cell they divide repeatedly to form wall layers okay in regular rows and the primary whereas if you take a look at the sporogenous cell they divide once or twice to form megaspore mother cells so i i hope it's clear the parietal cells they will uh, divide and redivide repeatedly okay to form the wall layers whereas the sporogenous cell in figure c you can see they divide once or twice to form megaspore mother cells these they get themselves arranged in linear rows of 8 to 16 cells okay and each megaspore mother cell nucleus it will divide by meiosis to form two first they will divide by meiosis to form two and and also after a long gap okay they will divide into four haploid nuclei but what happened here the wall formation between the nuclei does not occur just take a look at figure e you can see four nuclei but the wall nuclei uh, the wall formation does not occur and each megaspore mother cell with four haploid nuclei becomes converted into a seno megaspore okay so this is termed as a seno megaspore that is the megaspore with four nuclei and such megaspore they develop the female gametophyte okay thus the development of embryo sac that is the female gametophyte is tetrasporic type meaning why it is tetrasporic type because all these four spores tetra meaning four right or all these four nuclei they will develop into the female gamete they will take part in the formation of the female gametophyte uh, girls uh, if you remember that the female gametophyte when we study the development of the female gametophyte this last stage here in figure e you can see that the megaspore is having four nuclei okay this is the uh, w this megaspore it will lead to the formation of the female gametophyte and it's also referred to as a seno megaspore right so it's mul it's having four nuclei so today we will study about this uh, megaspore how it will develop into a female gametophyte so for that let me uh, show you this another picture okay so we will talk about only about that megaspore okay so in figure a you can see that four nuclei four nuclei which are present in that seno megaspore figure a now what happened this megaspore is haploid and it represents the first cell of female gametophyte right that that one i had already mentioned and in netum we see that the megaspore cell it divides by meiosis to form four daughter 
haploid nuclei. But the thing is that there is no wall formation between these nuclei. It is a single cell with four daughter haploid nuclei. Okay. So does the megaspore here, it, this model cell, it directly becomes four nucleate megaspore. And such megaspore is called a seno megaspore. Now the development of this, generally a large number of megaspores, they are formed inside the ovule, right? Not only a single one. So many are developed inside the, the megasporangia or the ovule, but only one will develop into a functional female gametophyte. And the development of female gametophyte, we can see it is tetrasporic type. Why tetra meaning four, right? So why tetrasporic? Because this female gametophyte is formed from a four nucleate seno megaspore, which is equivalent to four megaspores itself it's just that these nuclei there is no wall formation between them they lie within a single cell now this four haploid nuclei of the megaspore they will start dividing by three nuclear divisions okay so as you can see in figure b and eventually a vacuole will develop inside the in the center so that the developing gametophyte it enlarges in size so you can see in figure C here a vacuole is present at the center and these free nuclei are pushed to the, towards the periphery and the cell it enlarges in size and the nuclear division it still continues. Now the vacuole it moves towards the opposite as you can see here in the figure so that the developing gametophyte it appears like an inverted flask here. And ultimately, a large number of free nuclei are formed. If you take a look at figure D, you can see the vacuole. It uh, moves towards the opposite side and the cell itself, it looks like a flask ship. Cell and inverted flask and with many free nuclei. And the developing gametophyte, it may become spindle shaped or inverted flask shape. It depends upon uh, from species to species, okay? And the wall formation, it will start from the basal part, okay? From the basal or the chalazal end of the female gametophyte and it will proceed upwards. But this wall formation, it takes place only in the basal region. Remember that. That is an important point to remember that the wall formation, it will take place at only the lower, the basal portion, but the upper part, it remains free. These nuclei, they remain free on the upper part, whereas on the lower part, the wall formation will start to begin. So as you can see, this is another figure, the same thing, okay, the female gametophyte here. So you can see everywhere there are free nuclei. And in the, in the center, towards the opposite side, there is a vacuole, right? A huge, uh, large vacuole at the center, but towards the opposite side. This is the female gametophyte. Now, if you enlarge only the upper portion, okay, only the, that upper portion of this uh, female gametophyte in figure A, so you can see in figure B, of course, in the middle there is a vacuole, but what happened to these uh, free nuclei at the upper part? They will find, it, they will uh, enlarge, they will become enlarged and they will accumulate the cytoplasm. And finally, they will round off in the form of oospores or the eggs. So you can see here in this figure B, the arrow here, which shown here, which in this figure B, the egg, almost there are two eggs here, right? So you can see one here below and one on top. So these three nuclei, just remember on top, they, on the upper part of this, Female gametophyte, they will enlarge and finally become the oospores or the eggs. While others, if you take a look at the other nuclei, they remain as free nuclei. Now, unlike angiosperms, the distinct archegonia, they are not formed in netum. Okay? So, you will not see archegonia in case of netum, the distinct archegonia. 
but however the cellular female gametophyte it will give rise to endosperm just take a look at figure c where you can see uh, the lower part where there is a wall formation between these nuclei which eventually lead to the formation of the endosperm cytologically some of the cells of the endosperm they are uninucleate whereas others they are multinucleate okay so that means these cells of the endosperm uh, when there is a wall formation here some of the cells will be uninucleate only single nuclei is present while others they are multinucleate so this uh, it shows the uh, how the development of the female gametophyte now I will uh, continue with fertilization so fertilization it happens just take a look at figure E and F this is the portion the part where it shows fertilization now in uh, netum fertilization is siphonogamous meaning that the pollen tube it will act as a carrier of the male gametes okay the pollen grains as you can see here in this figure now you know when we study the development of male gametophyte you have seen how the pollen tube forms and it will carry these male gametes so this type of fertilization is referred to as siphonogamous now the pollen tube it grow towards the female gametophyte and finally pierces it as you can see in figure e okay the pollen tube with two male gametes inside and the tube nucleus it will pierce through the towards the female gametophyte and more than one pollen tubes carrying these male gametes may enter into the female gametophyte as you can see clearly in this figure e two pollen tubes here two pollen tube nucleus they are trying to enter into the female gametophyte piercing through the cells of the female gametophyte and since there are no archegonia in case of netum the egg cells they remain freely suspended in the upper free nuclear portion of the gametophyte so unlike cycus and pinus where we have studied that the female gametophyte it has the archegonia where the egg nucleus will lie but in this case there is no archegonia just remember girls that main difference okay so don't get confused in netum there are no archegonia so the egg nucleus they remain freely suspended in the nuclear portion of the gametophyte in the upper portion not the lower portion of course you can see here two eggs on the upper portion of the gametophyte and if the apex of the pollen tube it happens to come near the egg okay its wall it will ruptures and the male gametes are released and usually one male gamete it fuses with the egg but sometimes what happen since there are two eggs as in this case more than one one egg may get fertilized and will form a zygote okay and will produce a zygote so that it usually happens in case of netum but only sometimes most of the time as we know that only single male gamete will fuse with a single female uh, gamete and after fertilization the complete female gametophyte it will become cellular and it will get converted into endosperm and some of the cells of the endosperm they remain as i had already mentioned they remain uninucleate while others they become multinucleate and these multinucleate suppose some of the cells they are multinucleate having two to three nuclei these nuclei they will fuse together to form polyploid cells okay and this process is referred to as gradient ploidy so just remember when more when these nuclei of the endosperm they fuse together to form polyploid cells this process is referred to as uh, gradient ploidy